Hello and good morning everyone. So now today we are uh, moving on forward through the, our USMLE step 1 2021 microbiological section of the first aid actually and in first aid we will uh, discuss about this bacteria Pseudomonas aeruginosa first list discuss the same bacteria from our capillary microbiological section of the USMLE and then we will come back to there. So coming to the Pseudomonas aeruginosa actually Pseudomonas aeruginosa uh, is a gram negative non-fermenting oxidase positive organism if you remember your uh, tree dry gram of your usmle uh, this first aid then you can understand that this organism is we have fermented true bacilli true bacilli is divided into lactose fermenting and non-lactose fermenting on non-lactose fermenting there were pseudomonas salmonella sigella vercolderia species among that among the non-fermenter this organism is oxidase positive they also produce the pigment. So these are the actually pigment producing organism. This was first we came into medical importance when we have went to the bond unit. In bond unit patient uh, was uh, discharging this blue or green color pus. So in each, we the clinician used to diagnose okay this is the pseudomonas infection because from the color only they will use to diagnose this bacteria. Actually, in the previous time when their culture was very uh, not possible in the resource limiting country, the, the pseudomonas was diagnosed on the basis of the order and the color of the posh infection mainly in the bond unit because bond patients are very uh, vulnerable to get infection with this pseudomonas. Okay, they produce the pyocyanin, pyoverdine, pyomelanin, pyorubin. So there are the four types of uh, this uh, say pigment that is produced by this bacteria, and mainly this blue green. That's blue for pyocyanin and green is for verdin. So they produce the pigments. They are also helps in the identification, and also they this pigment acts, acts the virulence factor and produce the uh, this uh, red um, reactive oxygen species and fluorescence they have the grape like order if you grow the organism suppose in a maconchiaga then you will have find this green color colony and there will be a grape like musty order if you uh, smell it it will produce uh, some odorous there will be there and that is a grape like order so this is gram negative not fermentum oxidase positive organism that produce the pigment they have an order like grape like order and they have slime layer so this is the uh, outer layer that's uh, prevent uh, that helps in the attachment they have non lactose fermenting colonies on the emb and maconchiaga so this is important if you have found a pale colony that is on a maconchiaga then there will be the differential diagnosis like pseudomonas salmonella sig sigella and among that this will the oxidase positive they have another important factor that they can form this biofilm so by forming the biofilm, they will be difficult to eradicate this organism. They will be difficult in treating this organism. The reservoir, they can find evacuation water, transmission from water aerosol, raw vegetable and flowers. So if you talk about the pseudomonas, they are medically important ecology. They are present in water and soil. So ubiquitous water and soil organism that grows to a very high number overnight in the standing water. So they are present everywhere. You need to they in intact skin they are not going to infect you but if there is a breach of your skin suppose you have a cut you have a bond so then then this organism if you get into contact with you then you will develop the infection okay so since they are found in the source soil and water source of infection include like raw vegetable respirator humidifiers sink drain faucet aerator cotton and potato flowers and if properly not maintained will pulse so they can found everywhere if you are uh, you can see the source the trans even then there will be a patient with transient colonization of the colon in 10 percent of people so if we if we have 10 100 people among 110 people have this bacteria colonized in their gut only so this bacteria is in, as a part of normal flora in your gut only bacteria gets on the skin from the fecal organism require executively careful housekeeping and restricted diets in the bond unit so in the bond unit there even the this like water raw vegetable humidifier this are will be the source of infection to that patient so restriction in the bond unit complete isolation is very important and prevention of this possible source that can lead to the pseudomonas infection is very very important for a bond unit and other uh, like operation theaters and everywhere there where we cut the people where people can get exposed to this and get infected 
Talking about the pathogenesis, the, we know this is the gram-negative bacteria. Since it is a gram-negative bacteria, obviously we have discussed previously about the endotoxin and in exotoxin. Endotoxin are present in gram-negative. Exotoxin can be released from both gram and gram-positive and gram-negative, whereas endotoxin is present in every gram-negative. So, since this is a gram-negative bacteria, it will cause endotoxic shock. It will may activate this three pathway macrophage complement and a tissue factor leading to DIC and shock. So endotoxin shock will be maintained by this organism. They also if you remember they also have pro, the pseudomonas also possess exotoxin. If you remember the, that in which the protein synthesis where we have discussed previously diphtheria and pro, uh, the pseudomonas group that in which the pro elongation factor 2 and with the protein synthesis. So it has gram negative so it is endotoxic activity it also has exotoxin active activity and that is inhibit the protein synthesis so pseudomonas exotoxin a adb ribosylate elongation factor 2 inhibit protein synthesis which is similar to the diphtheria like toxin the liver is a primary target they have the this slime or say capsule that allows the formation of pulmonary micro colonies so in the lungs they get easily form a micro colonies due to this capsule and slime layer and because of that they are difficult to remove by phagocytosis. They can easily be, you can see, see the patient with cystic phagrosis, they have been very prone to get infected with this pseudomonas infection. So we have do done with the pathogenesis that endotoxin, exotoxin and this, uh, their, their capsule or slime layer. Now coming to the disease, the healthy people, in the 10% people you can only see they are the normal flora, they become colonized to our gut. They can develop this hot top folliculitis. They can de develop uh, eye, then disease of the eye. The eye get infection. Like eye ulcer can be developed in a patient with trauma, coma, or prolonged contact lens wearer. So this they will develop this uh, infection with pseudomonas and produce the eye ulcer. They in bond patient GI tract colonized skin colonization of the scar. In the bond patient, in this since this is a normal flora part here is gut, they will colonize over your skin and then infect the bone area that is the scar and then develop the cellulitis and develop the blue green post discharge. Even septicemia and patient may goes into the death condition or maybe develop septicemia. We need to treat that. There will be a neutropenic patient that develop pneumonia and septicemia, offer so super infection that is infection while on antibiotic. So patient may develop this and after, when patient are on antibiotic then there will be a chance of developing this streptococcus no no this um, pseudomonas infection possibility more chance if you are on antibiotic this and this bacteria infect as a super infection to us so this is a neutropenic patient develop pneumonia and septicemia chronic granulomatous disease patient develop pneumonia septicemia this is pseudomonas is catalyst positive diabetic patient may develop the osteomyelitis that is diabetic food if it even can cause infection of your ear otitis externa that is in the swimmer diabetic and those with the pires ear septicemia will develop in as a fever shock plus skin lesion that is the black necrotic center erythematous margin which is known as the ichthyma granosum gangrenosum so this is the ichthyma granosum is a characteristic characteristic features of this pseudomonas infection a patient when develops septicemia due to bacteremia due to the pseudomonas infection there will be the skin lesion then in the skin lesion there will be the necrosis black necrotic center erythematous margin will be seen in a patient with pseudomonas bacteremia and that is term is known as the ichthyma gangrenosum this is a characteristic feature of pseudomonas infection in a patient with septicemia or say bacteremia catheterized patient develop urine tract infection cystic fibrosis patient may develop early pulmonary colonization recurrent pneumonia always high slime producing strain so in the cystic fibrosis patient they are very prone to get infected with pseudomonas mainly with the slime uh, producing strain and they cause recurrent pneumonia they can be easily be diagnosed we do the gram stain we found the gram negative bacteria we do the culture in the culture will they can easily be grown on the McConkey and other like blood agar also they can be grown but in McConkey agar they will form non ferment and pale colony and they can even produce the pigment from there we do the biochemical test like oxidase and other biochemical test and identify the organism okay so it is very easy and they can be easily identified by the gram stain and culture treatment will be that with the say pseudomonal that is anti pseudomonal penicillin that belongs that uh, that are piperacillin ticarcillin so this is the uh, anti pseudomonal penicillin and also aminoglycoside like amikacin and fluoroquine like ciprofloxacin so 
Prevention can be done by pasteurization or disinfected of water related equipment and washing, prompt removal of the catheter, avoid flower and raw vegetable in the burn unit section. So prevent the source that are possible source of pseudomonas to restrict the that area will prevent us. This bug is actually a drug resistant bug. So they have the possibility of they are not usually killed by all antibiotic. So antibiotic susceptibility testing is must and they are resistant because they have this gram negative bacteria have porins. This bacteria has especially intrinsic resistant missing high affinity porins some drugs enter through and they are plasmid mediated. They even have this beta lactamase and acid lighting enzyme. So this is a drug resistant enzyme you can say. Now let's come to our our point where we were discussing about this so this is pseudomonas erigenosa you can see a greenish a greenish color or uh, infection and this is the ecthema granulosum which is a patient with bacteremia having a central necrosis with edematous surrounding this is ecthema granulosum feature so let's come to the point of okay so what is pseudomonas infection? Pseudomonas infection are the infection caused by kind of bacteria called pseudomonas that's commonly found in the soil water plant. They typically cause infection in people with is called pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, this is the gram negative bacteria. You can see this is the one of the media nutrient agar where we have grown this pseudomonas aeruginosa. They are white in color, pale in color. They are not any pink in color. So these are pale color non fermenter but they have produced this pigment and there's you can see green pigment diffused in the media the colony has not this lactose fermenter they if they are a lactose fermenter they will be pink they are non lactose fermenter but they are producing the pigment and pigment has been diffused into the media this is pyocyanin they even can produce this red color pigment this is a pyorubin okay we can even see this pyorubin you can see this green color bacteria you can see over there and this is pyovardine so they can produce pyocyanin, pyorubin, pyovardine, pyomelanin we can see rarely you can see this greenish color this bacteria is not colorful it is the producing the pigment that has diffused in the media they are actually colorless that is a pale in color you can see this colony also present in our USMLE step one book also so talking about the infection they can cause infection of the skin and musculoskeletal tissue like bone unit and surgical wounds they can cause respiratory tract infection chronic infection in the cystic fibrosis patient acute pneumonia in other patient they can cause cns infection they cause localized infection they can lead to bacteremia they can even cause endocarditis they can may cause the urine tract infection now let's come back to our usmle Step 1, 2021, Microbiological Section, page 143, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This aeruginosa is aerobic. So these are the aerobic organism, motile, catalyst positive, gram negative rod. They are non-lactose fermenting, oxidase positive. So this is a gram negative, non-lactose fermenting, oxidase positive organism, frequently found in the water and has a grape-like odor. So this is the odorous as well. Pseudomonas is associated with pneumonia. We can remember by their names pneumonia, sepsis, ichthyma gangrenosum, UTI, diabetes, osteomyelitis, mucopolysaccharide capsule, otitis externa, nosocomial example, exam, nosocomial infection, example, catheter and equipment, addiction, people who inject drug, skin infection, normally as the heart of folliculitis, own infection in the bond victims. They produce the mucoid polysaccharide capsule, may contribute to chronic pneumonia in patients with cystic fibrosis due to the formation of biofilm since due to the slime layer say capsule layer then 60 fibrosis patient they can contribute to the chronic pneumonia and this is very difficult to treat a cystic fibrosis patient when get infected with this bug this side pseudomonas produce peep remember this this produce phospholipase c that degrades the cell membrane produce endotoxins this is a gram negative all gram negative produce endotoxin so endotoxic shock they produce the exotoxin we remember this inhibits the protein synthesis by inhibiting the elongation factory like the diphtheria toxin so this this is there and they also produce the pigment so what they produce they produce endotoxin exotoxin pigment and phospholipase c okay they also pigments are pyovardine, pyocyanin, that is blue green pigment. They, are, they generate the reactive oxygen species. So they have four uh, pigments the pyovardine, this is a green color, pyocyanin, this is a blue color, pyrubin, rubin is red, and pyomelanin, melanin is black. So they have the different color. Among them, pyovardine and pyocyanin act as a virulent factor because they can generate reactive oxygen species. Talking about their ulcer, they can cause corne corne corneal ulcer or keratitis in a contact lens wearer or minor eye trauma. 
we have uh, we previously discussed this ichthyma gang gangrenosum this is the picture which i have shown you and this ichthyma gang gang gangrenosum is due to this ichthyma gangrenosum is be due to is a characteristic feature of this pseudomonas bacteremia that is rapidly progressive necrotic cutaneous lesion caused by pseudomonas bacteremia so this is a infection in your blood but they are predominant they are predisposed they are seen they are been expressed as cutaneous lesion rapid progressive necrotic cutaneous lesion and that is due to pseudomonas bacteremia typically seen in immunocompromised patient what are the treatment options? The treatment options are anti pseudomonal penicillin in combination with beta lactase and in beta like piperacillin plus tazobactam or ticarcillin. Third and fourth generation cephalosporin example, ceftazidim or cefifime can be used, monobactam can be used, fluoroquinolone can be used, carbapenem can be used, amicacin aminoglycoside can be used. So these are the treatment options. All other like you cannot treat with the first or second generation of cephalosporin. You cannot treat with the ampicillin, amoxicillin, this uh, initial penicillin group of antibiotic. This will not going to be killed. To kill this, you need the higher end penicillin antibiotic like anti pseudomonal property that is piperacillin, ticarcillin. You cannot kill with the flucloxacillin or ampicillin or cloxacillin or say uh, previous uh, natural penicillin G or V that cannot be killed. You need anti pseudomonal penicillin that is the piperacillin, ticarcillin, that's group of antibiotic. In cephalosporin also we need only fourth, third and fourth generation like septazidium as cefipime will kill. First set and second generation will not going to kill the suborg. Then like monobactam, fluoroquinolone, carbapenem, this is going to kill this organism. Okay, so this is a very nasty bug and very common in your life. You will get lot tons and tons of patient with coming with a pseudomonas infection and you need to treat this. Because of that, these are very common, there will be a question about this on your board. Thank you.